Hello and welcome back, my Royal Rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue. And tonight we have the crazy theory that Harry was somehow wired at his phone hacking trial. It would be quite ironic, don't you think? Phone hacking trial? Wired for Netflix? I had my doubts because they make sure that you are not bringing anything strange inside the curse and they can be quite thorough about that. Still, that piqued my curiosity and took a look at a couple photos from both days. By the way, remember that it's a good idea to look for the highest resolution photos that you can find. In this one, I checked the usual spots such as his ears and his wrists. The only thing odd that I saw was a wrinkle near his tie that shouldn't be there. I noticed that in pictures of the other days at the court, when he was wearing a darker tie, the shirt he was wearing had a wrinkle in the exact same spot. Coincidence? That's a bit odd. But in all cases, the best explanation I can have for this is that Harry was wearing the same shirt for both days in court, which is a bit gross because you can imagine how much uh, was he sweating while answering or non-answering those questions. I had to inspect his ears as well because some users on Twitter were suggesting he could be wearing some kind of earpiece, but I saw no traces at least from this angle and any device that could be used to listen to answers or something. At the same time, I don't think Harry would have the ability to successfully hear an answer on an earpiece and say it afterwards. I feel like he's going to mess up in some way. What I did notice is that he looked wary. This man needs some vacations ASAP, and no, the private hotel room is not cutting it. You can see pain in his eyes. Maybe he is emotional about the fact that during the trial, nobody has asked him any questions about his crotch. But going through all these pictures, I found this of his head. You know how concerned he was with William getting bald? Now, I want to make a point about this because the joke of Harry losing his hair is, well, not a joke anymore, but it does become a point. And I'm going to say this in good faith. Harry should shave his head and get jacked, train some jujitsu. He doesn't need any more therapists. By this point, he should be able to pull himself by the bootstraps. But uh, we all know that there's something that he has to do first, and I'm sure you will be quick to point that out in the comments. Uh, but something that is funny is The Economist, one of the most, uh, let's not say prestigious, but more like popular magazines in the finance world, has somehow jumped in the Harkle roasting bandwagon. The Economist, to add to Prince Harry complaining on film, streaming now on Netflix, and Prince Harry complaining in print, 28 pounds from all good bookshops, now Britain can enjoy Prince Harry complaining in court. I needed to know if the content was as snarky as the headline suggested, and yes, it's quite brutal. Let's jump right to the end. Andrew Green, the beast, offered no emoting and certainly no standing ovations. At one moment in the trial, Harry made the point that a certain article was related to a certain invoice. And so what? asked Mr. Green. Harry explained that he thought this made the article suspicious. And so what? repeated Mr. Green. We all need to thank Andrew Green for putting Harry on his place and make him realize that he's just making a fool of himself with all this. He's the one telling the king, or more like the duke, that he is naked. The phrase felt like a summary of the entire proceedings. As Mr. Green himself pointed out, everyone knows that Harry has had the life of a palling press intrusion. And yet, increasingly, as his complaints accumulate, the reaction of the British public to the king's son is like the reaction of the king's council, likely to be a uh, wary. And so what? But you know what's even funnier about all this? That Meghan once said that she doesn't look at Twitter, that she doesn't check social media. No, that is for peasants. But that she does read The Economist. Do you think she still reads it? But maybe yes, because... We have seen time and time again how methane is not only oblivious to Harry's shenanigans, failures, and misfires, but she actively encourages him to put himself in situations of embarrassment. So in some sense, if Harry's self-destruct is going as planned, then maybe uh, she enjoys having breakfast and reading this kind of articles. 
Remember that Megan is a woman of vision. She's playing for the chess. And you might not know, but the parent company of outlets such as The Telegraph are more than ready to sell these newspapers because, well, maybe nobody is paying to read them. So I guess that's why they have begun to spit out headlines like this one. Harry was madly in love with his girlfriend, and his court statements seem to show that he's never forgotten the fun-loving blonde. Could Harry and Chelsea have made it work? What is this? Seventeen magazine? Among all the crazy romance theories that this article intended to craft, there's the official reason that Harry gave about their split. Chelsea had no interest in being involved in public life. She found the press intrusion as difficult as I did, and it was the main factor in why we decided to end our relationship. But there's something I don't understand. That explanation sounds plausible if you were talking about a relationship that lasted just a few months. She would have immediately realized that this life was not for her. The constant scrutiny, whether with phone hacking or not, and the very public exposure would have been a deal breaker real soon. But Harry and Chelsea lasted almost seven years. And when we are talking about a timeline of years, you get to know a person really well. In fact, picture this. We can still say that they had a relationship longer than Harry has known Meghan Markle up to this point. Harry allegedly met Meghan in 2016, almost exactly seven years ago. Let that sink in. I don't mean that people cannot fall out of love. I mean that past a certain amount of time, if both have well-defined characters, they know what they want. And if any of them has the idea that this is not going to work, that won't take seven years to realize. And this is absolute speculation on my part. Perhaps Harry hid his monsters, all the skeletons in his closet, all the bad stuff remained hidden in the basement of his mind. And I cannot blame him. I had my fair share of demons under a heavy lock until I realized I was fooling myself. And for a man, that is not an easy thing to do. But if this was the reason, or for whatever reason they split, it seems that Harry did not learn from the experience. And no, writing some wacky memoir is not going to cut it, especially if you were not the one who wrote it. And no, I'm not talking about his ghostwriter. I liked J.E. May's answer to this. She matured, and she went to university and started a business. She was growing and evolving, and she realized he wasn't. He was going to be a selfish, dimwit man-child forever. She found the exit door. What is your take on this? I would love to read it in the comments. Final thought from Christopher Wilson. The writing is on the wall. I am no lawyer, but I've been up the sharp end of legal complaints in my time as a journalist. And on the evidence so far, I'd say Harry has about as much chance of success in this misbegotten case as a one-legged man in an arse-kicking competition. My royal rogues, we are really close to 130,000 by this point. So all you have to do is hit the like and subscribe buttons so you don't miss any of my daily royal memes and news. Two most important words, much love and bliss.